How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in this video we're going to be covering quick, easy and effective PC gaming tips in which every single person should know. These tips will be ranging from how to quickly close out of games, identify potential issues with your PC as to why you may be experiencing low FPS, to help get the most out of your system and make your PC usage way more convenient. First up for an extremely basic yet incredibly useful tip, especially for those of you that could have experienced outright game crashes where your game locks up, you're unable to use your mouse or your keyboard, you're stuck with a black screen and all you have to do is either log out. To get around this, the best thing in which you can do is start to use control shift and escape on your keyboard to open up the windows task manager once this is open go to the top left hand side to options make sure that you select always on top task manager will appear above every single other application on the pc and take full priority so let's say for example cyberpunk has just crashed on me i can't close out the game i'm unable to use my mouse on my keyboard to exit out and i'm stuck with a black screen well in this instance what we'll do is press control shift and escape if you still can't use your mouse at this point use the arrow keys on your keyboard to scroll down to the game application that's crashed then all you need to do is press delete. That will then close the application and should fix any of your game crashing issues without the need to full restart your PC. Speaking of convenience, ease of use and saving file space, that's where today's video sponsor Wondershare UniConverter comes in. I've been able to make use of Wondershare Compressor in this video to save vital storage space on my PC whilst being able to keep my important files without having to completely remove them from the system. Wondershare UniConverter aims to be an all-in-one video toolbox which is incredibly easy and simple to use and offers a ton of features to be able to do almost anything for PC or camera users. You can convert videos to different file formats to make them widely accessible on other devices or platforms such as Windows or Mac. Save vital storage space on your devices by using the Wondershare compressor which will allow you to compress your video media without the loss of quality with dynamic changeable options going from 30% of the original file size all the way up to 90. Also features the brand new AV1 codec which offers phenomenal visual performance at a huge reduction to the original file size. If you're looking to quickly edit some videos for personal use or social media you can use the Wondershare editor, merge multiple videos into one with the merger, create your own video tutorials using the Wondershare screen recorder, we can add in a logo, webcam, draw on the screen, add directions, all with inside of one easy to use recording which will be saved at the end of the screen recording session without the need for extra editing. Quickly and easily convert video files into GIFs for easy sharing on social media. And on top of all of those features we have the new AI lab which has a ton of advanced AI accelerated applications. Auto crop, which happens to be one of my favourite features, will resize your videos automatically for different social media platforms. Autocrop will allow me to make this into a portrait format which is fantastic for YouTube Shorts, TikTok or Reels. So if you're looking to get into content creation, looking to share to social media or post on platforms such as YouTube or TikTok, give Wondershare UniConverter a go using my link in the top of the description down below to start using the all-in-one video toolbox today and a massive thanks to Wondershare for sponsoring today's video. Next up is a very similar tip and can help you fix any potential graphics issues you're experiencing on your desktop, games, hard crashes or it's just a quick and easy trick in which you can pull out of your back pocket. This is a quick and easy shortcut in which you can utilize at any time to reset the graphics driver on Windows. This will simply turn off the graphics driver and start it up again, which can help alleviate any potential issues. For this, you'll need to press Windows, Control, Shift, and B on your keyboard at the same time. Sometimes this can make your PC bleep for a second. Your screen will typically turn off for a few seconds, restart, and the graphics driver will then be reset inside of Windows. Next up is to make sure that you're running on the correct monitor settings and the best monitor cable to ensure that you're able to unlock the highest resolution and more importantly, the highest refresh rate possible on your gaming display. It shocks me how many times people just plug and play a new monitor in, especially high refresh rate monitors, and they don't realize most of the time you will have to manually set that refresh rate. Right click on your desktop, head down to display settings, go over to your display resolution, go to the drop down menu, and ensure that you have the recommended or highest resolution available selected in most cases. What you'll then want to do is navigate down to advanced display, scroll down to choose a refresh rate, go to the drop down menu, and then select the highest refresh rate available with inside of here for your display. If you're using a HDMI cable for your setup and you're unable to get the highest refresh rate available, try switching over to a DisplayPort cable as this could be running a newer DisplayPort standard which could support the resolution and refresh rate of the monitor in which you are using. Stay on top of your system maintenance every now and then quickly and easily by navigating to the bottom left hand side typing percent temp percent then pressing enter. What you want to do with inside of here is highlight all the way down from the top to the bottom, right click and select delete. If any prompts come up during this process, select do this for all current items, then select skip. The only files and folders remaining with inside of there after this are the only ones Windows was actually using. Everything else was an excess caching file sitting on your PC, soaking up resources. Go to the bottom left once again, this time type run, then press enter. Inside of the run box, we're going to type in temp, then press OK, select OK to grant access. Once again, highlight everything with inside of here, select delete. Make sure that you are making use of the Windows Disk Cleanup utility. For this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the button, type in disk cleanup, 
Then select the disk cleanup utility. Select the drive you want to run disk cleanup on. You could do all. Well, most of the time it's going to be your C drive. Then select OK. I would also recommend to use the cleanup system files section. Is this will remove any excess Windows update files which could still be lurking on your PC alongside other unnecessary data. Select all of the options you want to remove. Once again, go all the way down to the bottom. Unselect any you want to keep. Then select OK at the bottom. Select delete files. And the disk cleanup utility will then do its thing. I would again recommend using this utility around about once every month, if not once every three months. Did you know in most game launchers such as Steam, Battle.net, Origin, you can typically remove certain components of games which are very large in file size. For an example, instead of the Battle.net launcher, Call of Duty Warzone's entire install size is roughly 200 gigabytes. But if you navigate down to the bottom left to the option settings, navigate over to game settings with inside of here, head over to game settings, Warzone, modify install, modify install once again, you can actually unselect or select different components of the game which you do or don't want installed. Select done, go to the bottom left, update Warzone, that will then remove those components of the game you no longer want to have installed, freeing up a ton of extra file space. It's also definitely worth checking out other launchers such as Steam. For instance, I've recently started playing Black Ops 3 Custom Zombies, and if I right click on the game, head down to properties, head over to local files, you can see that Black Ops 3 is taking up 124 gigabytes on my system. But if I navigate down to DLC, I'm actually able to unselect components such as the campaign, the multiplayer, multiplayer DLCs, as these are all automatically selected because I own all of them. Head back over to local files, and as you can now see I'm using 81 gigabytes including all of my workshop content saving me between 40 and 50 gigabytes in size from two seconds of work. For another extremely useful tip especially for those of you that don't have the best download speed in the world if you've recently purchased a new drive on your PC or if you have other drives and you want to be able to move your games around quickly and easily without having to uninstall them and re-download them most game launchers such as Steam allow you to do this very quickly and easily now. All you'll need to do is simply navigate over to your game of choice that you want to move right click on the game navigate down to properties head to local files, then go down to move install folder. Go to the drop down menu, you can then select any of the other drives which are installed to your PC which have Steam folders set up with inside of them. For our next tip and trick, this is incredibly useful if you are experiencing issues with inside of Windows, game crashes, slowdowns, or if a new issue has occurred with inside of Windows and you can't quite figure out what's causing it. By navigating to the bottom left, typing CMD, opening up command prompt. Inside of here you'll then want to type SFC slash space scan now. The command can be found linked in the description down below where you can then copy and paste that if you wish to do so, then just press enter. This will then find any missing files or damaged files, repair those files, or download new files to replace into the operating system where some could be missing. It will then restart your PC and you should then be good to go and this can fix most Windows errors very quickly and easily. For the many of you that are out there using Discord, there are actually a few decent options which are available built into Discord which can help you improve the quality of your microphone and remove background noise automatically. Inside of Discord, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the user settings cog. Inside of here, go to voice and video. Scroll down to the advanced section where you should then see the advanced noise suppression delivered by Crisp. For a quick example of the audio quality, this is me in a room with a couple of fans on how it would usually be when I'm gaming. If I navigate down and enable Crisp noise suppression, here is the exact same settings with the noise suppression then enabled. Every single time I stop speaking, the microphone automatically cuts off just after I stop speaking, so there is no wasted noise and no background noise coming into my Discord calls at all times. Scrolling down to the voice processing sections, where you should then also have echo cancellation and automatic gain control. I don't like automatic gain control, but I would recommend enabling echo cancellation for some of you, as that may give you better results. Once those options have then been set, scroll back up towards the top to the automatic determine input sensitivity slider and adjust this for your new settings, as you may be able to find that the input sensitivity slider can be reduced significantly for better voice pickup results, especially with lots of noise in the background. Did you know that you can quickly and easily screenshot anything inside of a Windows PC with a quick shortcut with no need to add additional software? To do this on any PC at any time, simply hold and press the Windows key, hold and press Shift, then press S on the keyboard to bring up the Snip and Sketch tool, where you can do a simple box, a freeform, capture the entirety of a single application or do a full screen sketch. I like to keep the basic option, click and drag for anything you wish to screenshot, let go of the key, that will then automatically be copied to the clipboard where you can choose to either save the image or it's ready to be copy and pasted into applications like Discord for easy screenshot sharing without having to use any third party applications. If you're on a Windows 10 or 11 desktop, your PC may actually not be turning itself completely off when you use the shutdown function. By default on many desktop PCs, when you shut the PC down, the Windows kernel, which is the back end of Windows where everything runs and your drivers are running, typically only goes into a hibernation state and doesn't actually shut down. So if you have any errors with inside of the kernel or an error in a specific driver, this won't actually reset the kernel entirely 
thoroughly and if you're turning your PC off to potentially fix any issues you're experiencing, this will more than likely not work. If you are experiencing Windows issues instead of shutting down your PC, use the restart function by navigating to the bottom left, clicking on the Windows key, right clicking on the power button and using restart as that will actually restart the kernel. If you want to turn this setting off system wide so when you shut down your PC it fully shuts down, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type power space plan. Then select Edit Power Plan. You then need to navigate to the navigation bar at the top. Select where it says Power Options. Navigate over to the left hand side and select Choose What the Power Buttons Do. Inside of here, you'll then need to navigate up to the top to change settings that are currently unavailable. If you do have the option for Turn On Fast Startup recommended, if this is selected, your PC will not actually properly shut down. So if this is selected, unselect this, like Save Changes, and every time you shut down your PC now, it will fully turn off every part of Windows and the PC for a full complete shutdown. Make sure that you are also updating your GPU drivers. In the last year or so, Nvidia and AMD have both pushed brand new features to their drivers, which you won't have access to if you have not updated within the last year. These are absolutely phenomenal features such as Nvidia's image scaling and Radeon Super Resolution, which will allow you to run lower internal resolutions with inside of games. Similar to tech such as DLSS or AMD's FSR, they're free, simple and easy to install and there's no reason not to. If you're not sure what GPU you have, navigate down to your task bar, right click, open task manager. Alternatively, use control, shift and escape. Head over to the performance tab with inside of here, scroll all the way down on the left hand side until you find GPU 0, go to the top right, so then there's the make a model of the GPU in which you have. Now in our previous step I mentioned NIS and RSR technology for both Nvidia and Radeon GPUs. Now if you would like to see more information regarding RSR or NIS you can check out the two videos which are showcased on screen now. If you would like to turn on and try out this tech, right click on your desktop, open up the Nvidia control panel, first of all head over to adjust image settings with preview in the top left, make sure that the middle option has been selected, select apply. Go to the left hand side to manage 3D settings, go to image scaling at the top, turn this to the on position, set the sharpening factor to anything you wish to do so. I would recommend turning on the overlay indicator, selecting OK, selecting apply in the bottom right. For those of you running on an AMD Radeon card, right click on your desktop, open the AMD software. You'll need to navigate over to the gaming tab at the top, navigate down to global graphics, scroll down to Radeon super resolution, switch this to the on position, once again set the sharpen factor to anything you wish to do so, boot into one of your favourite games. You'll typically find the best results from GPU bound games, so this is going to be games with a lot of graphics fidelity, that typically get lower FPS. Go inside of your in-game settings, find the resolution setting inside of the game, and start lowering that down. For me, I have a 4K monitor, which is 3840 by 2160 so if I want to utilise NIS or RSR, I will simply set a resolution lower than that resolution. Next up is to consider setting up custom fan profiles for your GPU and the PC itself. For the PC itself, this will typically be done through the system's BIOS, which you can access by restarting your PC, spamming the delete key, looking around on the system BIOS where you'll typically have fan options available. We'll then be able to set a system wide fan curve for both the fan speed and temperature. This is especially important because most systems come with a very reserved fan curve which often doesn't even hit 100% fan speed especially when the PC gets very hot. The fan curve in which you can see right now is a very basic linear fan curve setup. You aren't going to want to exactly copy this, you want to find a fan curve which works best for you. Once it's set up on the system BIOS you can also apply this to your graphics card itself. For those of you on an AMD Radeon graphics card you can usually access this through the AMD Radeon on software panel, going over to performance, tuning, enabling the fan tuning setting, then advanced options for this, where you can then set a custom fan curve again. And if you're not sure how to set this up, you could just match this to the system fan curve in which you set up in your BIOS. For those of you on an Nvidia GPU or an unsupported Radeon GPU, you can set up custom fan curves through a number of third party programs, in which my favourite is MSI Afterburner. You can find this linked in the description down below or do a quick Google search. Make sure that you also install the Reva Tuner statistics server when you install this, which we'll be utilising later on in the video and has tons of useful features. Inside of Afterburner, heading over to the settings cog, enabling custom fan settings with inside of here, you can then set your custom fan curve for your GPU, where I'd recommend utilising 100% fan speed at roughly 70 degrees at a maximum, as you never really want to run your GPU hotter than this, as you will see a significant performance reduction if it ever reaches that. To consider implementing an FPS cap into nearly every game in which you play. This will have power reduction benefits, which also help to lower the temperature of your PC, keeping your fan curve running lower, making your PC quieter, giving you higher performance for longer as the system won't get as hot so it won't have to downclock itself and give you complete even frame pacing for the smoothest gameplay experience possible. My favourite ways to set up an FPS cap are to not utilise the FPS caps inside of most of your game settings but to actually utilise the Revatune statistics server program which comes bundled with MSI Afterburner. Inside of this application you can add in any game, go over to the right hand side and set a frame rate limit. I'd recommend limiting your FPS to something which your system can nearly always achieve about 98% 
of the time. Once you've set your FPS limit, you can also utilize Revertune's statistics server to monitor all of the statistics on your PC, including frame time pacing. In MSI Afterburner, head over to settings, monitoring, select any and all options you want to monitor inside of your game, select show an on-screen display, select apply. Go to on-screen display at the top, go to toggle on-screen display, set any hotkey which you're comfortable with, I like slash, select apply and OK. Tab back inside of your game, press the hotkey in which you set up for Revertune statistics overlay, we should then be able to monitor your FPS, system statistics, and with the FPS cap you set up earlier, this should be incredibly smooth and nearly 100% stable. Regardless of what game it is that you're playing, you owe it to yourself to jump into the settings menu, find any video, display or graphic settings which may be available to you, which you should look to at least lower in some department to see massive performance improvements, often with very little visual loss. Try utilizing the medium preset in most games you play. There are very few modern games which are releasing these days which have terrible graphics at lower presets. Especially for those of you running on 1440p or 4K monitors, they'll typically enable most of the visual candy, not push the system too hard, and you'll see a latency and FPS improvement. If you would like to fine tune your settings to get the best visuals possible and the best performance, first of all, texture settings. Make sure that you are matching texture settings in your game to match your system spec. Don't go running high textures on a low-end system as you want to make sure that you aren't utilizing too much of your GPU VRAM as this could cause bottlenecks, slowdowns and stutters if you use too much. If you have any other quick tips or suggestions do let me know in that comment section down below as it's always fantastic to hear from you guys and if you wish to see how to get more out of your PC and optimize it for your use case consider checking out the two videos on screen now.